Hello, all YouTubers. I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this weather presentation and tropical discussion for Tropical Storm Arthur on May 17th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe if you are not already. It really does help support my channel. And please also, and this applies to every single one of you, please watch the whole video. You, it, you'd be surprised how much it really does help to grow my channel. So please consider subscribing and watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So I am close to 500 subscribers and I'd love if you guys would help me to get there. So again, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, today we're going to be, be talking about Tropical Storm Arthur and this is the latest 5 p.m. advisory. So if you're looking for the latest data on Tropical Storm Arthur, you have come to the right channel. You come in the right video. All right. Uh, latest path they've been. So at first the models were just going to take this thing way out to sea, right? Like it was going to come off of Florida and just sort of go out like this. And then all of a sudden the models kind of freaked out, right? When there's a western movement, the models just started freaking out, taking it way close to the mid-Atlantic and potential landfall. I'm not ruling that out, but now the models, instead of freaking out, they're starting, instead of going way to the right, and they freaked down the way and went to the left, they're starting to adjust a little bit. All right, so now it's being more of a North Carolina brush, but nonetheless, dangerous impacts all the way up the east coast here. We're talking about rip current, high surf, high winds, and even a little bit of rainfall getting as far north as the Chesapeake and the Virginia Tidewater. So let's get into it. We do have now tropical storm warnings that have been out for quite some time. North Carolina coast, Kildeva Hills, Moorhead City, just north of Wilmington, North Carolina. The storm will continue to strengthen. This thing will strengthen pretty much almost until it dies. All right, and how does that make sense? Well, I'll tell you. All right, it's going to move, and its peak winds will be about 60 miles an hour. So this will be near hurricane strength, but once it reaches that 60 mile an hour, um, Trop tropical storm status of 60 mile an hour winds, it will be what's called extra tropical. So the storm will be strengthening. The winds will be strengthening because of the aid of a jet stream that's okay, going to help to enhance the storm winds. However, even though the jet stream is enhancing the storm winds, it's taking away its tropical characteristics. Plus, the storm's moving in the cooler waters now, which stick around for the whole video if you want to see it. The, warm the waters have started to shockingly warm up all of a sudden here as Arthur approaches. So that's good for the storm, right? But the track will brush North Carolina coast. We'll still see some of the models do actually indicate an, an Outer Banks landfall and then kind of curving out the sea is what majority of the models are going with at this point. Wind history. We have definitely had some wind history anywhere in this orange. We have evidence of tropical storm force winds over the water. No tropical storm force winds on land yet currently. Um, this is the latest of uh, tropical storm force wind probabilities. And you can look, if you look at the easternmost point on the Outer Banks, you do have about at least a 40% chance to see winds of 39 miles an hour plus those tropical storm force winds but the greatest probability will remain just offshore but that doesn't mean we can't get tropical storm force winds um north carolina coastline 20 30 40 percent chance plus all right um virginia coast up the up the jersey shore it's been back and forth this there's look there's a wide cone here like earlier it was like way here and then like once the model started freaking out that the storm was going to go close to the mid-atlantic it was here and then the cone was more like this. Now the cone started shifting a little bit farther to the right again. So this cone of potential winds of tropical storm force strength are starting to fluctuate. All right, they have been they have been fluctuating, but are moving close more to the right now. Even Bermuda does have a ten to twenty percent chance of tropical storm force winds. All right, the rainfall though they have expanded a little bit. So from the Weather Prediction Center, they are predicting for the um, parts of the Outer Banks widespread two to four inches even. All right, so that's a lot of rainfall, all right? And even well outside of that, almost up to the Virginia border, much of eastern North Carolina there, um, especially towards the coastline, even one to two inches is still, when you get that tropical moisture like that, it doesn't take, it does not take much rainfall to cause some flooding problems. And not to mention, we're gonna have an onshore flow as well. So this is the same map that I showed you earlier, except this is when the um, thunderstorm or the tropical storm force winds, if they do hit, when will they arrive? Um, North Carolina will be about overnight tonight and to tomorrow morning. If it does hit the Virginia up to the Jersey Shore, if it does, um, that would be through the day Monday. So Monday morning for like Virginia and the Chesapeake, more like Monday afternoon for the Jersey Shore. But 
the threat really moved away from the uh, coastal New England, coastal mid-Atlantic. There's not really a threat. You could see some gusty winds of 25, 30 miles an hour, but I don't think 40 mile an hour winds uh, <clears throat> will be a much of a possibility anymore. Bermuda, those winds will arrive for you. Earliest reasonable time is 8 p.m. Um, on Tuesday for the for Bermuda, but the most likely arrival time will be Wednesday morning. All right, key messages. What are the key takeaways from this? So again, a tropical storm warning for the North Carolina coast and dangerous coastal surf, dangerous group currents, and an onshore flow. Uh, like I said, southeast U.S. through the mid-Atlantic, or even parts of the northeast could see some high waves as well. So it's not just the rain and the wind as part of the tropical storm that really needs to be taken seriously. All right, let's refresh this. I believe this is the latest. This is the latest map. Yes, it is. Uh, current storm position. Um, the uh, the center of the storm is sitting about 77 and a half degrees west and about 31 degrees north uh, latitude, and uh, like I said, 77.5 degrees west longitude. All right. So it is sitting off the uh, southeast coastline. Will continue to move uh, north. Again, a lot of the models were predicting you know close to mid Atlantic. Now, majority of the models have smartened up kind of, and they kind of taken a storm as, as a hook to the right because that upper level low, if that got here sooner and the jet stream was more like Hurricane Sandy when it was like this, the low could have gotten attracted up the jet stream and through the mid-Atlantic coast like Sandy was, but now the upper level low is kind of taking its time and the high pressure said, yeah, I'm weak, but I won. So it's going to kind of help to pull that storm out to sea in a fashion like this. But there are still a couple models that do believe, like the AVNI and the HWFI that believe we could still have a mid-Atlantic or northeast landfall, but the chances are starting to get lower. But like I said, we can still feel the impact for the mid-Atlantic coastline, even without a landfall. This storm will continue to strengthen. About 36 to 48 hours from now, even about 36 to 72 hours from now, that time frame, it will be at its strongest. You can see where, where these yellow lines are, under 1,000 millibars of pressure. All right. And there again, there are a few models from the GEFS ensemble tracks that do bring it into the... Uh, mid-Atlantic, but again, majority or uh, most likely outcome is for it to turn to the right. But you can see a lot of the models still are predicting a. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Still are predicting a North Carolina landfall, and that's where they all do seem to agree pretty well. But once that storm starts to turn to to the right or to the left, that's where the models kind of start to disagree. But majority of them, again, predicting a turn to the right so far. GEPS tracks. Okay, again, a few of them are taking it to the mid-Atlantic. Okay, one just had the gut to just take this thing all the way out through past the Azores and out through Europe. Crazy model, but <laughs> uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> they take it through Europe and five days out, and some models are just taking it to Bermuda after five days. So that's interesting. But again, 36 to 72 hours from now, that's when Arthur will reach its peak wind strength. Um, it has really started to, I mean, I'll have to pull up a satellite loop. It has lost some of its convection. All right. Um, peak strength, again, a lot of the models are showing uh, peak strength right at 48 hours from now, and I do definitely agree with that. Near Category 1 hurricane strength, possible we could have sustained winds of 60 to 65 miles per hour with this. All right, so definitely something we got to keep our eyes on as it moves uh, up the East Coast and eventually turning right out to sea. What am I kind of concerned about? Well, this storm is basically, I mean, it's kind of like right here. So it's bouncing back and forth between slightly cooler waters and slightly warmer waters. However, as it moves towards North Carolina, well above average, right along the Gulf Stream here, right where the storm is going to track up past two, two and a half, even three degrees above average Celsius. So that's like four to six degrees Fahrenheit above average. So if you're normal, um, ocean temperature is like 74. It could be 78, 79 potentially, all right, depending on the... On the anomalies, but even the Del, uh, not the, uh, Delmarva, yes, but also the Chesapeake, 1 to 2 degrees Celsius or 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above average. But right with that storm track in here, it's going to be some well above average waters in this storm's path to help it last a little bit longer. And again, that's because it is the Gulf Stream after all. All right, but let's take a look at this. So the, at first, this storm, we thought once it left the Bahamas, pretty much going to be done with those 80 degree waters. Well, since it's starting to move along that Gulf Stream, like I like I predicted as a possibility, those warmer waters, are, that narrow tunnel of warmer waters, 75 degrees, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, could keep that storm alive longer and even strengthen it a little bit. All right. Plus, like I said, the jet stream is going to help to enhance the storm winds. All right. Um, 
Hurricane Hunters, uh, we'll see. This, they might have actually completed this mission. Yeah, this actually, I guess they started leaving the storm about 10 o'clock this morning. This, well, that's when the satellite data was from anyway. And thank you for Levi, Levi Cow and Tropical Tippets. The storm is definitely, I'll show you like a loop satellite as well. All right, but we did find, they did find some winds there of 45 to 50 knots, possibly over 55 miles an hour. Um, I think the next advisory they could take it to, I think they'll keep it at 45 mile an hour sustained winds for the next advisory. The one after that might take it to 50. All right, but that's, they found one little area of 45 to 50 knots of wind. So if it was more widespread, we'd have uh, probably, the National Hurricane Center would probably upgrade it in the next advisory, but we'll have to wait and see. But yes, we did find uh, pressures of 1,002 millibars at the storm center. So, you know, thank you to all those hurricane hunters that just fly into those storms for us and really gather, help to gather that data. Um, I'm going to take off my face off the screen just for this one map here. All right. So, um, two maps I kind of want to focus on here. Um, this is from the uh, latest aircraft mission. All right. Yeah. So, um, when we look at the top right here, this is the kind of the um, surface winds and the and the rainfall rates here. Uh, we did find some rainfall rates of the the hurricane hunters at about eight forty this morning. We they did find some rainfall rates thirty to forty millimeters per hour, which is well over an inch. Matter of fact, I think that's close to two inches of rain an hour. All right, so some very heavy rainfall rates with the storm system, but even 15, 25 knots. All right, anywhere from twelve uh, eight thirty five to nine. 15 this morning. So definitely rainfall rates well over an inch an hour. Um, they have been also finding some surface winds um, at times. Uh, they've been finding some surface winds of around 40 knots. All right, again, this depends on their flight path as well. All right, but 40 knots, that is over 45 miles an hour. All right, and again, here's your flight level winds. You kind of like your MSLPs kind of start, starting to drop there as well. But and look at the bottom left. Your, this is where you have your high... Um, relative humidity and right, you got those temperatures and those dew points that are really close together here all right and then they do kind of separate as they left the storm depending on their flight track um, of the hurricane hunters but the temperature and the dew point here are very close to each other indicating some high relative humidity and high moisture content all right so let's take a look at some models now and the gfs model again does indicate a a landfall all right for uh north carolina uh, coast of North Carolina. I will see if we can try to do an 18Z model run. I don't think they're really out yet. Yeah, it's not even out yet. It's 520. I thought it'd be out by now. All right, but anyway, moving up the coast, and then once it leaves North Carolina, it starts to make that turn to the right, because looky what's coming here. That front jet stream kind of helped to push that storm out to sea, um, but very heavy rainfall nonetheless for North Carolina there. We'll get into the rainfall totals as well. Surface winds, uh, so we are finding some surface winds of above 50 knots, actually, uh, well over 50 knots, really. Um, 980 millibars of pressure here. So you can see 60 mile an hour winds again, and the storm really starts to grow and strengthen. And then it, once it starts stalling out over those cooler waters, then the storm's going to say, wah, wah, wah. but the GFS model for some reason does have a die and then circling and then going back into the mid-Atlantic coast, but it'll be very weak by then. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on that. And this is the GFS model, by the way. Uh, cyclonic vorticity is here. This isn't a very, you know, strong storm by any means, or a very big storm, I should say. It is a decently strong storm. If you look from the past model, so this is the last model run we had, 60, and this is now. So a little bit of a rightwards nudge, a little bit of nudge to the right there. Let's take a look at this frame here. Let's see what the last model run had. Now, then, now, then, now. So slightly off to the east with this model, again, the models are starting to moderate off a little bit. So it's gonna make a turn to the right, potentially scrape Bermuda and come back for the coastline, but it'll be very, very, a very weak storm by then. Might only be like a mere low pressure system if that. Uh, precipitable water, very high precipitable water values, over four or five inch, four, four to five inches actually, precipitable water. And something that can actually help flow down towards the surface. We can get some very heavy rain at the surface. All right, total precipitation, uh, let's probably, we should probably go about uh, 72 hours. And as you look over the next 72 hours, Outer Banks here, it's possibly six inches of rainfall. This is going to be a very serious rainfall threat. And again, right where that storm tracks, it's going to have that cone. And the cone can pretty much tell you what's going on here. 
I mean, here's your cone. Whatever those two inch plus rainfall rates are. So we're gonna have to see how this storm tracks. But like I said, and like the National Hurricane Center says, there will be impacts felt well outside of the cone, whether it be the coastline, whether it be Bermuda, impacts will be felt outside of this cone, even though the storm isn't very large. All right, European model, uh, not indicating, they were never so hot on the storm, really. They, they were really not indicating a landfall, slightly weaker storm, instead of 989 millibars of pressure at the GFS, more so 1,000 millibars. Still pretty strong as it kicks on out to the east, thanks to that advancing warm front um, lifting up from the south and west and that jet stream coming in. Look at the total rainfall of the European model, and it's pretty feisty. I mean, especially not the Outer Banks, but just south there. Down parts of Moorhead City, Wilmington, North Carolina, possibly over four to six inches. And just off the coast, lucky, 17 inches, according to the European model, of rainfall. So that's pretty weird. Smoky Mountains, also four to six inches of rain possible, but not from Arthur. But even outside of that, much of the Outer Banks, two inches plus, two to three inches plus. So some pretty serious rainfall rates. And rainfall totals are possible. Surface winds. Definitely some very strong surface winds over 50 knots. Even at 997 millibars of pressure there. So definitely a tropical storm. But it will become post-tropical. Again, as it latches up with that jet stream. Moves over those colder waters. Will be more post-tropical. But definitely looking a lot more impressive on the cyclonic vorticity signature than the GFS did. Very, very impressive. And the relative humidity values... Nothing to laugh at either. We do have a some high relative humidity values near 100%. So temperatures in those dew points really close to each other. So some high moisture content is is there. It's present already. All right. So definitely something out, something to watch out for. Uh, Tropical Storm Arthur. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am the Weather Dude signing off. Until next time. Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to check out the videos to your left and surrounded all around you on the screen. Those videos, please go check them out. See you guys next video.